Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about the part of the coin collection that we sold this past week. How much did we pay for it and how much did we make on the whole deal? We can't wait to share it with you guys. Let's get this video started. So like we said, we can't wait to share with you what we paid for something and what we uh, sold it for. But the reason why that we made what we made on these coins, just for a little bit of a backstory, is because we wanted to play a long game on some of them. Some of them we've had for a year, some of them we had for six months, some of them we've only had for a few months. But right now we felt like it was a time to sell coins that were just coins that we might find one day or coins that were a little bit of an extra in our collection. And... Uh, it's going to be some decent returns but i want to talk to the critics for just a moment right so there's always someone in our comment section there's always someone out there that basically wants it to be a badge of honor for a coin dealer to make absolutely nothing on coins and uh you know what were coins kind of designed for in this current age not only to enjoy history but really to have a safe haven for your for your cash you know, your cash is becoming more and more worthless, so people want to put their coin, their money into coins, into bullion, into the housing market, whatever they want to do. And at a certain point, they're going to collect on that investment and want to make a profit. And so it's kind of crazy sometimes that collectors and dealers out there basically are telling me and telling other people that you should make it a goal to make as little money as possible as a badge of honor. But not at the same time looking about looking at it like you invest so much time, energy, uh, money, your knowledge, your life into something to ultimately bring yourself a return. And so a lot of this and the coins we're going to share today is going to come from our knowledge, our understanding of the market, who we can sell them to, who we found to work with us on certain coins that took us six months to find a client for. All of these things sometimes are just chunked out the window and thrown away because someone thinks you should make nothing as a coin dealer. And so uh, we hope these coins are helpful and informative to you. And just we want to inspire people to make long plays, make plays that would benefit them in the future. And so let's share these coins with you and what we made. So the first coin that we want to discuss today is this 1925S California commemorative half dollar. It's graded MS62 and it's held in a rattler. And people that don't understand rattlers and don't understand the demand that they have will think I paid too much for this coin. I paid $225 for it. And that's kind of, I think, at retail or a little bit above retail for what they're selling for. But a little bit of backstory about this coin is that basically not many people sent in Cali's when they went to go, uh, you know, send coins back in the rattler days. And so um, since the market has kind of increased and people are finding more and more uh, enjoyment in collecting these, Californias have driven up dramatically in price. And so we, we paid $225 for this coin and we sold it for $400. So we made $175 profit. I think we've held it for about eight or nine months. So not too bad. The next coin I want to talk to you about is this 1855 Type 2 gold dollar that's held in a rattler. Um, it's CAC approved. It really is a nice coin overall. And so I picked it up because I wanted to start moving a little bit towards buying gold in rattlers, people starting to like them. There's actually a few coins out there that there's only a, you know, a handful of them that are in these cases. And we're going back to the knowledge of rattlers and people that are wanting to fill holes in their collection. If you know that there's only one or two of these coins in a rattler holder, most of the time someone's gonna pay an exuberant amount to acquire it. And at the time I thought I paid too much for it. I paid 810 for this coin and I think that's probably a few hundred dollars over retail for what it's going for in a normal holder. And this one ended up getting us around 900 bucks. So this one we made $90 on, which is not too bad. The next one I wanted to discuss is this 1893 $2.5 gold lib. It's graded MS60, was CAC approved, and is in a rattler. The reason why this coin is different from the rest is because it has a 108 prefix to the cert number. And when you are looking at this from you know a collector's view that doesn't know much about it you could say what does that have to do with anything but if you look at it from um, a collector that's moving more into rattlers the 108 prefix is basically the post um, it's kind of like the post modern of the 108 rattlers the ones that are like the white label rattlers the 
the holy grail of the collectors of old holders for PCGS, basically. And so these started to get hot a little bit, and I saw one that popped up on eBay for $750, and I ended up getting it CAC approved myself. So I have $766 into this coin. And once again, at the time, I think that's over retail, but I was taking a risk and a gamble and making a long play and trying to find a client for it over time. And so I ended up selling this coin for $1,000, made it, you know, made a decent profit on this coin. But the one way prefixes are in demand and they will get you a premium. The next coin I want to discuss with you is this 1917 Type 1 SLQ, graded MS62 full head by PCGS, another Rattler coin. This is going to be a Rattler video if you guys didn't know. And so this coin I bought at the TNA show. I paid full retail for it at the time because I know that there's not many of these in Rattler holders to begin with. A lot of them are cracked out. A lot of them have issues that people wouldn't want to buy them for. Um, and this one really was a decent coin in a, de in, in a Rattler holder. And so I bought it thinking I'll make something on it one day. And so we ended up Paying 400, like I said, and selling it for 600, made a quick $200 profit from June all the way to September. So can't go wrong with that. Found the right client and made the sale. Up next is this 1942 Proof Mercury Dime, graded Proof 66 by PCGS. Is it held in a Rattler? Yes. CAC approved? Yes. Um, I sent this one in myself, but when I purchased it to begin with, I looked at what was great about the coin. It's got toning. It's a proof. It's also in a rattler, and then I got a CAC approved, and I'm like, whenever I wanted to sell this coin one day, I'd make something on it. And so we paid $250 for this coin all in. I think I had it for about two months maybe, and I sold it for $300 to a collector that was willing to pay the premium, and I thought I did well on it. Up next is this 1900 Indian Head Scent graded MS64 Red Brown by PCGS. It has a gold cack to it, which is going to be the most of the premium that you find when I tell you what it sold for. I paid $375 for this coin, basically 66 red brown gray sheet money at a coin shop in Chicago. And I thought, you know, a lot of these coins are reaching double what, what people wanna pay. So if you're looking at a gold cat coin, that's only $300. Sometimes they're selling for 600 to $800 on, on eBay or selling for even more on great collections. So I studied a little bit of the market, tried to understand where this coin would sell for. I listed this coin on Virtual Coin Show on Facebook for $7.75 and it sold within 10 minutes. So we made $400 on that coin before we had to pay for shipping. So definitely a big win there. Don't run into them all the time. So it's good to celebrate them when you can. The next two coins we wanna to talk to you about is these two 1938D Buffalo Nickels that we bought for Gray Sheet at, um, at a show a while back um, at Grapevine. And I paid Gracie for them. Like I said, I think Gracie was like 40 bucks at the time. So I had $80 into these coins. Really nicely toned on both sides. I sent them to CAC because I thought they were cool. They came back both CAC approved. And so I was into these coins by 110 bucks, which is not too bad. Um, and then I sold them both for $170. So I held them for a good while. I got my collector enjoyment out of them. I got to look at them, got to use them for video content and then I passed them off for a $60 profit at the end of the day. So can't go wrong with that. Common coins, but if you do like them, just wait for the right person to buy them. That's a great tip for people that really like coins but can't keep them all. Let's continue on this video with the synopsis of these Ikes here that we just sold from our personal collection. So we have a 1974S Ike. Uh, I think I paid $75 for this, and I just sold it for $205. Um, the 72S Ike, I think I have about 38 in it, and I sold it for $125. Uh, 1976S Proof, I paid 38 or 40 bucks for this, and I just sold this one for $225, just because Proofs and Ikes are a little bit tougher to find. This is the only 76S uh, Silver that I've actually seen in a Rattler, and uh, I paid about what I thought was too much at the time, $86 for this, and I offered it to someone for $200, and they took it. <clears throat> Got a few others down here, 72S, had about $60 bucks into this one, sold it for $170. Uh, 74S here, also I think I had about well, maybe $100 bucks into this one, sold it for $205 as well. Another tougher coin here, this is a 1976S Proof 64 Ike. Uh, not as much issues as the first one in Proof 67. 
I paid $54 for this one and sold it for $150, just a lower grade. Um, we have the 74S here in 65. Uh, I paid, let's see, I paid 30 bucks for this coin at a show. Casey bought it actually, and we sold it for 150. And the 71S here we bought for around 100 bucks and sold it for 150. So, uh, taking a look at the swings that we we had, I really wanted to start setting back X because I feel like they would have gone up over time. And I'm going to tell you right now and post exactly what we have into them and then what we sold these nine IX for. I hope it's helpful and informative to you that sometimes it's not, not best to sell them right off the bat, but rather sell them when you know you have a collector for them that really enjoys them and will pay you a premium. So a little bit of backstory after watching that Ike video, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about why I fell in love with Ikes. So basically one day I was going through a show and I found a pretty cool 1971 Denver Ike and it was in a rattler so i sent the pcg to cack it ended up cacking i brought it back and i really just love the coin and so at the time I, I paid like three or four times what that coin would be worth in a normal holder and people thought drew you are insane drew you're crazy why would you buy that coin why you know and so I, over time i think i acquired like 15 of them and i paid people thought i paid crazy money for all of them and um once again you know, if we're talking to critics here, people saying you're you, why are you making so much money? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Um, you should be making nothing. And once again, I was taking a risk buying stuff that people thought was overpriced. And then as the market became stronger and stronger, I started to make a profit. I started to do well on these coins. And that's something that once again, that gets just chunked out the window. And so don't let people tell you that. That's something that is, uh, should be just shut down in the coin uh, business. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about a few more things really quick before we uh, end this video. Uh, for Rattlers overall, a good thing to kind of think about when you're buying them is, um, one, are they CAC approved, but also um, what grade are they? The higher grade that I end up finding on these coins, the more people are going to want to pay for them. Um, I'm going to give you an example now of what I bought recently. So I paid $750 for this 1925S Cali, and it's a 65. It's CAC approved in a Rattler. And 750, once again, seems like way too much. The coin should go for 500, 550, maybe on a good day. And someone offered me $2,250 or $2,200 for this coin. And so, uh, like I said, a thing to remember is that the higher grade that a coin is um, in a Rattler is important, but also how many coins were housed in Rattlers and how many you think have been cracked out. If there's only 20 of those coins from that date in that Rattler, most of the time, you could estimate that only five or 10 are left in existence for people to collect. So if you run into great coins, make sure you keep them and wait for the right customer because they will come and they will pay you a premium. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We hope this perspective was important and gave you guys a little bit of a backbone when, when wanting to move more into long plays and thinking about the market and what it will do. Um, we hope you guys like it. Like I said, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on what we made today and subscribe if you're new. And if you guys want to check out some great videos, the Freedom Coin Show podcast is uploading a bunch of great content and we can't wait for you guys to check it out. But we will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to also check out the ONA show that we are going to be visiting this weekend. We can't wait to see you guys there and buy some stuff, show you guys some stuff. Anything would be great. It would be love to see you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys there.